and uh, we will be starting the iMobility Forum webinar on automation. Uh, please let me know if you have uh, any issues in the questions panel or the chat panel. If you have any audio or visual problems, please let us know. So first, I would like to introduce our speakers today, Bastian Krosse from TNO and uh, Maxim Flamon and David Abrizolara from FTQITS Europe. We will be introducing first the iMobility Forum and the iMobility Support Project. And then uh, Maxim Flamand and David Abrizolara will be talking about the VRA networking and automation. And finally, an introduction and the achievements of the automation working group of the iMobility Forum will be given by Bastian Krosse from TNO. After this uh, presentations, we will have a Q&A session where you can have a discussion with the speakers and they will answer questions that you can post in the question panel. Uh, just a for short introduction on the webinar interface. So on the right of your screen, you will find a collapsible menu where you can uh, change your audio and visual options. And if you have any issues, please type them also in the questions panel along with questions that will be answered after each presentation. A few words on the iMobility Forum. This is an open and independent uh, public-private platform comprising uh, 228 organizations with the aim of the successful development and deployment of ITS. And the iMobility Support Project supports the iMobility Forum in three main uh, ways. First, it uh, supports the activities. Second, the deployment. And third, the dissemination. Uh, now I will give the word to uh, David and Maxim, who will talk about uh, VRA. A VRA complements the activities of the iMobility Forum and also supports in the European collaboration in deploying automation. Yes. Thank you, Andrea, for uh, this introduction. I will uh, start introducing uh, the VRA project. I'm here with my colleague, Maxime Flapa, who is uh, actually the project coordinator of this project. VRA is uh, a vehicle and road automation. It's a support action founded by the European Commission that aims to create a network of uh, uh, stakeholders and experts in order to progress in the deployment of automated vehicles and its related infrastructure. The main objectives of the RA uh, are to create an active uh, European network of experts uh, on the topic of vehicle and road automation, and this is why there is a strong collaboration with the iMobility Forum, in order to, uh, to foster the, uh, the cooperation between uh, actors in Europe. Then uh, there is the contribution to the EU-US-Japan Trilateral Working Group on Road Vehicle Automation. Uh, the activity of the array is uh, also focused on the identification uh, of the needs for vehicle road automation, in particular, in particular uh, considering uh, different topics like the plan path, regulatory needs, testing and connectivity, evaluation of benefit, decision and control algorithms, human factor. The VRA project aims also to uh, promote the research on vehicle and road automation and also to uh, create a catalog of the current uh, European and international activity that you can explore uh, by, using our, uh, by using our website and our wiki. The tool of our project are, of course, the mentioned website, where you can find uh, information about uh, activity on automation, the European and international, our Twitter account, our wiki, that lists uh, several projects uh, containing activity from uh, Europe and uh, from US and also Japan, 
And we have also uh, produced uh, uh, several webinars on the topic of automation that you can find in the library of our website. Uh, you can participate uh, as to our project also as associated partner. The associated partners are uh, involved in the activity and uh, they can uh, receive all the material of the, uh, of, of the project and be directly involved in the production of our uh, uh, of uh, our deliverables uh, the uh, we can find uh, you can find here a list of the mm, most recent events that uh, have been held uh, in the uh, and supported by by the array uh, we had uh, several initiatives at the uh, ITS uh, uh, Congress in ITS World Congress in Bordeaux and uh, in the future, we will uh, uh, support uh, uh, other events, um, like, for instance, uh, an automation working group meeting in Brussels, the uh, trilateral uh, automation working group in road transportation that will be, will be held in uh, Washington in January uh, in connection with the Transport Research Board. I would like also here to mention the Grand Cooperative Driving Challenge that will be held in May ne next year in Helmond and uh, is uh, supported by one uh, by one of our uh, of our partner TNO and then uh, also I think that this is not in the list the transport search arena that will be held in April 2016 in Varsav and finally in the in the very long future long term the IT network congress that will be held in Melbourne Australia Thank you for your presentation. If you have uh, any questions, don't hesitate to write to the uh, VRA project and to uh, my colleague Maxim, who is the project coordinator. Thank you, David. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let us know. Otherwise, we will continue on. And uh, Bastian, if you're ready, we can uh, start with you. Yes. So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Bastian Krosser. I'm um, chairing uh, the iMobility Forum Group on Automation and Road Transport together with Joachim Svensson from, from Volvo. Um, I would like to share with you uh, for uh, the coming minutes uh, where we started as a working group and where we are heading to. First of all, about the working group on automation. Well, our, our mission is simply to bring uh, people together, to bring um, projects together, to bring uh, organizations together, to bring automation uh, towards deployment, deployment and implementation. That's the simple goal. Objectives. Um, if you want to do such a job, it's of course very important to understand the current state in automation and road transport. It's not only about understanding it, but also to explore it and to promote uh, automation amongst all the stakeholders. And also give a clear direction towards all stakeholders where we should be heading to. Strategy. Um, Um, we work by different uh, sub-working groups, sub groups that uh, address all the relevant topics in uh, automation. Um, we want to supply uh, input to roadmaps, roadmaps that, not, that are not only supplied by this working group, but that are um, developed in collaboration with uh, other stakeholder groups. Um, and we also want to use and apply scenarios to these roadmaps. Scenarios means that we focus on the different uh, uh, domains in road transport. That means we focus on passenger cars, we focus on um, the commercial vehicles, and last but not least, the vehicles in urban environments, the people moves. 
how would we do this uh, by uh, bringing people together and very active relationship with the European Commission, um, share data amongst the different stakeholders, and also by organizing annual workshops where everybody is invited to bring their ideas to the, day, to the table and discuss the issues on automation. So where did we start? We started about uh, three years ago in 2012, and um, at that time, of course, there were still a lot of discussions about, about what is automation. Um, so we had a lot of dis discussion what we mean with automation, how we look at different uh, definitions from BAST, from uh, SE. So we came to a joint understanding amongst the different stakeholders. That was, I think, a very important first step. What we also did is that we discussed about what are the challenges, the challenges to really come to deployment of automated, to, to come to automation. And we made a nice overview of the key challenges that are ahead of us. We also defined functions. Functions, what are the typical applications that are now being developed and that are uh, coming to the market in the next coming years? It's very effective to talk about this to uh, create roadmaps. The scenarios that I re uh, just mentioned, we spoke about the different uh, modalities in transport. Research topics, what are really the topics that we need to address um, to, to accelerate uh, the advances in employment in automated driving. And of course, we try to uh, include all the relevant stakeholders that are needed to make this happen. To make this happen. So that involves industry, the automotive industry, suppliers, um, but also, of course, the public authorities. And in the end, we created a roadmap. Talking about these challenges, we you see here a list of challenges that we uh, addressed, uh, that we concluded uh, all together. You also see um, who are the persons leading the subworking group activities uh, on these topics. You see uh, representatives from uh, OEMs, from suppliers, from research institutes. Um, so it's about deployment, about what regulatory needs do we have to really make, uh, create legal frameworks uh, about the different member states. How do we test automation? Because that's still a very difficult question. It's about connectivity, about how will uh, V2X enable and create a maximum potential out of automation. All the issues about human factors, the digital infrastructure, what are the needs, needs in the digital infrastructure to uh, enhance automation on the public roads. Impact, of course, also very important in the end. Um, how do we learn and how do we understand what the real impact of automation is, accessibility, and decision and control algorithms about the technology behind. As I said, we started in 2012, uh, the creation uh, of the working group in 2013, a very strong, we started up the collaboration with um, the EU, US, and Japan, and also the VRA as a complement, complementary activity started uh, in that year. The main uh, establishment of 2013 was also that we created the first roadmap for ART. We did the recommendations to uh, Horizon 2020, the work uh, program for 2016, and 2017, and 2014. In 2015, we, uh, this year and also last year, uh, we uh, were very happy that we could give input also to um, the recommendations of the air track roadmap, and currently we are working on a white paper which reports about the activities and the supporting group positions. Very important is in this story, I think, the cooperation, cooperation that we seek with the different stakeholder groups. It's air track, but it's also the other stakeholder groups within Europe on automation. Going back a little bit uh, in, in, in history, uh, 2013, 
um, after the discussions about what do we mean with automation? What are the real challenges that, that are ahead of us? We also started working on the first roadmaps. And these first roadmaps, we made the split to, let's say, urban environments and highway environments. And we discovered that it really helps when you, when you are discussing with people from all these different stakeholders, with 30 to 50 people, it's very helpful to uh, talk about what do we need, let's say, on technological research, on TRL level 2 to 4, what really needs to be piloted for the next years, and what do we really need, uh, what is getting, let's say, close to market, and where should we support uh, the market uptake. And it's not really readable for you. Uh, in the end, you can all get this presentation to look at the details. But what we really try to do is really position all these uh, projects that are currently going on, activities in the market, we place them, let's say, in a scope from 2012 at that time to 2030. And of course, there are quite some differences between the urban environment and the highway environment when you're talking about automation. Well, this was a first step. And what also was a good element is that we, for each of these functions or applications that we included in this roadmap, we made a description what we mean with it. Because it's, uh, of course, very often happening that we have different understandings about when we talk about, for instance, a traffic jam assist function or platooning or whatever it would that you share in detail, in detail your vision. That's what happened mainly in 2013. In 2014, um, we wanted to, to, let's say, do some additional work on these, uh, on these roadmaps and really focus also on the deployment paths. This is an ongoing activity. We started with this in 2014, but it's still going on. And we decided that we want to have a deployment path on the one hand for, uh, the, for the vehicle path, so that means for passenger cars and commercial vehicles like trucks, and also for the urban mobility um, domain. And with this, we mean uh, the typical domain of the people movers. The, the vehicles that um, already start with level four automation when there is no role or a very, very limited role of a driver or somebody who is taking control. The, this is, of course, this picture is, is very generic and quite high level. Uh, therefore, we, uh, we created some more detail in where we plotted the different applications over, over time, again, towards 2030. You see that scope for urban uh, mo mobility. Um, as I stated, um, over the last few years, we have had in Europe, of course, many interesting projects on, on cyber cars and automated buses. We had the City Mobile 1 project, the City Mobile 2 project, and also in the future work programs, there will be a lot of attention for really accelerating deployment of these type of vehicles. In the end, um, resulting in a automated taxi type of system that should be operational at a full level five vehicle, like the Google car. So this is a, 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 let's say a consolidated view on which type of applications we see for the coming years to come on urban mobility. Then we have the recommendations for deployment on the vehicle path. And we have separated, as I said, them in two, because they each have their own, let's say, characteristics. On the left, you see the future for passenger cars um, as, we, uh, as we see it. You see, again, a lot of um, applications uh, plotted. Um, 
starting from the level one type of systems that are currently available, also the level two applications that are currently deployed towards the level three type of applications like the traffic jam chauffeur or highway chauffeur. They are called differently uh, amongst different uh, OEMs and suppliers, but a system which is operational uh, in level three. And this is, of course, also very much reflecting uh, the, the, the link with the current Horizon 2020 program for 2016 and 2017. In the end, we will go from level three to level four type applications in the beginning, as you see, with, uh, let's say, at, at the limited speed, but in the end, on, on a highway, um, highway scenario and where we will end up with, with a level 5 system, if we will make it in 2030, is of course debatable, but um, this is the scope that we have um, defined altogether. On the right side, you see the trucks. The trucks, um, um, CACC, platooning is of course a very uh, active topic. Um, as some of you may know next year during, during the Dutch presidency uh, there will be a European truck platooning challenge will be held different uh, OEMs are invited to, uh, to show their skills on truck platooning and the interaction between let's say public authorities and the industry is made at, the, um, at that time a very important step will be taken there and of course this step could be taken because we had very interesting projects over the last few years. And the next step to take is really to come to pilots. And that's again what you see here, strong link with the 2016 and the 2017 program, where uh, we really want to move onwards towards truck platooning, really getting, it, really getting them into pilots, getting them away from the test track, but getting them on the public roads. In the, end, in the end, moving towards the fully automated truck. These were deployment paths for the different uh, uh, domains. Um, we also gave very concrete recommendations for the uh, Rise 2020 work program 2016-2017. Um, when you look at the previous slides, you see a strong uh, connection with this slide we again identified altogether what are the techn technological research questions that we have, what are the topics that we should focus on for the coming years because they are still not solved. A few of them to mention like is like the roadworthiness testing, how do we test and evaluate test automated vehicles among the different levels. Evaluation of benefits is still uh, very difficult uh, to do so, but if we start creating a lot of data from different pilots, we, we, we can start doing this. And the other topics are there as well, like the digital infrastructure. Then the pilots, we really believe that we should focus on pilots for the coming years, and we are also very pleased um, that this is now part of the program for 2016-2017. And in the top, you see the industrialization of the different um, applications that are uh, foreseen for the coming years to come to the market. Here you see in, de in detail, as I uh, indicated, the activities that we uh, think are very necessary on piloting. So we need piloting on a level three type of systems. Um, mainly when it comes to, to passenger cars and when it comes to trucks and the level four to five type of systems are mainly those systems that are being deployed in an urban environment and then we mean the people mover applications. So again, um, very good link to 2016-2017 program and the same holds for the technological topics that are, let's say, um, needed to do so, to really come to this pilot. Then we come to 2015. Um, in 2015, 
um, and also 2014, um, the Airtrack um, task force was uh, established, and we were very happy that with all the um, knowledge that we gained in the, the group of the mobility uh, forum, that we could uh, bring that also to the table of the um, Airtrack task force, which now is moving to a working group. Um, we're very happy to, to have this debate and discussion and give input to, uh, to the roadmap that was established uh, uh, recently and which was also giving a very good input to uh, the future work programs. Of course, we mentioned here thing to attract, but we also did this to the other type of organizations. Some highlights to give you an impression of what we're doing in 2015. Davide already gave an overview of uh, those type of congresses and events that we uh, participated in, both from VRA side and from biomobility. Also for, the, the, for this year, we have been uh, quite active. Um, we have been active in the TRB workshops in the uh, in US. We had our uh, annual meetings with the working group. Um, in October, of course, we were um, present at uh, the ITS World Congress in Bordeaux. We were very happy that many, uh, that one of the focus areas of the whole Congress was, of course, on automation and that we could bring, um, let's say, the important topics to the table of discussion. And uh, I think it was a very successful congress uh, where we could make a contribution to. Um, we also started this year on a preparation of a white paper, uh, a white paper of uh, all the, let's say, new insights that we got, uh, gathered uh, in the um, in the in the subworking groups. And I can we shortly want to. Uh, show you just some highlights and some first insights from that, from that white paper. What's the idea about the white paper? Of course, uh, there's a lot of, there are already a lot of white papers uh, present, but we think this is also an ongoing activity to also uh, keep the discussion alive and give inputs uh, towards the future especially uh, highlight the needs on, on specific research areas and again to really accelerate the deployment. We also see this document as a, a guidance for projects or for the, for, for the new calls that are uh, coming up soon. We also want to provide suggestions and recommendations uh, among all the sectors and stakeholders, um, which is very broad. It's the automotive, the supplies, infrastructure, but also telecom is important to mention. And uh, we want to show potential directions, path and challenges and risks towards deployment. We are creating this document um, and we make links to all the different uh, sub-working groups. Um, given the time that we have, I don't want to share all of them. Uh, for now, I would like to share shortly the legal and regulatory needs, uh, key messages uh, about automation and connectivity, and also about the digital uh, infrastructure. Of course, we really want your input on, uh, on these topics. About regulatory needs, I said this white paper, is, uh, on each of these topics we have a few pages of, let's say, uh, our joint uh, vision, but uh, here I just want to share with you our main message. When it comes to um, regulatory needs, we see, of course, that many uh, member states are uh, moving fast towards getting new type of legal frameworks in place. I think is a very positive thing uh, that this is happening. At the same time, um, it's also a risk that each of the member states comes up with a new legal framework which is different from the others. 
which could also harm the speed and the deployment of automation. So we really see an absolute must to, uh, uh, to come to harmonization uh, of a free competitive legal framework. And uh, where we can support this, we are very happy to do so. That's also actually what is happening in the regulatory uh, sub-working group. Um, that's one part of the story. Uh, another really important part is really uh, raise the awareness of the benefits and the limitations of automation. Um, you see a lot happening in the news, a lot of um, um, stories are being told about what automation will bring. I think it's all a very positive story and uh, we also should be very aware to not create uh, too much hype here. Um, so it's important to talk about a, a true story about automation. What will it bring? What will it not bring? And when will it bring typical uh, benefits to us as a society? Then about automation and uh, connectivity, um, we think it's really important to have uh, a good discussion about, let's say, um, between the telecom operators and the OEMs and the suppliers. Of course, there has been a lot of work been going on on ITS G5, on the, the Wi-Fi P protocol. We really see it, see it as an enabler for, uh, for automation. But at the same time, there are also many advances uh, from uh, LTE towards uh, 5G. They are both very rel uh, relevant in the domain of uh, automation. And we really see it as a, a topic where we should look at where are the benefits from the different communication uh, uh, possibilities, not focus on competition, but focus on how these two uh, complement each other. I think it's good to have a European discussion on, on how this uh, how this is going on and the CITS platform which is also uh, very active um, I think it's a very important topic to to have this on the table. How will they go together? Amongst of course other type of communication um, needs. That's one part of the story. The second part is uh, collaboration. Um, connectivity is, of course, about vehicle to vehicle, vehicle to a back office, vehicle to pedestrians, but also vehicles to the infrastructure. And uh, we see that uh, we should pay more attention to the interaction of vehicles and infrastructure. And how will connectivity uh, cooperative systems also uh, create the maximum potential out of automation. How will it influence traffic management? How will it influence our physical and digital infrastructure? So um, there are many uh, elements in this discussion and we think the collaboration is very much needed. Then about the digital infrastructure. Um, if you look at automation and when you move upwards to the higher levels of automation, um, you also see that um, with the, the higher the level, of course, the higher also the demand to uh, the sensor systems, to the actuator systems, but also to positioning, to know, you have to know where you are and where the rest of the world is. So accurate mapping, precise localization is really key when to higher levels of automation. So looking at the level three type of systems that uh, the industry is working on and the pilots that we are, uh, are in front of us, I think this is a very important topic. Also we have to see what kind of information will be, will be brought from us to the cloud, what is the role of the cloud, what is the role of the road operators, or road operators who does what. And um, it's also really good to show um, how, how do we learn from these maps? How do we 
uh, how do we be, how do we learn from the dynamic information that is let's say kept in this map? How can we use it to um, accelerate the deployment? These are three examples of some of the highlights of uh, the white paper. As I said, we also address the other topics, but I won't share them with you for now. Um, this month, in the coming month, we will publish a draft paper, and we will uh, we will publish it for consultation. Those of you who are interested to give uh, your feedback on it, we are very much eager to, to have your input, uh, because this is not a story of just uh, our uh, community, it's a joint effort from all of us, and we plan in January 2016. And with that, I would like to um, start the discussion. And thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Bastian. Uh, we received uh, actually a request. If you could just give a short overview on cybersecurity, which you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Okay. On cybersecurity, um, I think it's very important that um, there are different elements in how we should deal with cybersecurity. On the one hand, we have, of course, how can we make uh, the software and the hardware, um, both of them, very robust against, uh, let's say, criminal intent. At the same time, we also have to be aware that cybersecurity is not only a topic about technology, it's also a topic about, let's say, processes. How can we, for instance, organize that a system which is now being deployed is also safe uh, after two years of operation? How will uh, the authorities that give admission to a vehicle, how do they have the ability to also check if a vehicle is still safe for cyber security after a few years of operation? How do we deal with software updates that change the vehicle during its lifetime, during its operation? So what we address within cyber security is on the one hand, what are the technical type of solutions, uh, what are the, the technical needs that we have to make. At the same time, we also look at what kind of organizational uh, structures do we need, uh, or processes do we need to uh, ensure cyber security. Maybe some of my colleagues would uh, want to, to add on, on this. Thank you very much. Uh, second, uh, we had a question about the human factors. So this was also mentioned in the white paper before. And uh, what are the main issues identified in terms of human factors? Okay. The, the, um, of course, everybody knows, and that's also what you see uh, uh, represented in um, the upcoming uh, calls for uh, 2016, also in the previous calls, if we want, if we are moving to uh, let's say level three type of automation vehicles, um, it's it's very difficult to um, to understand how the transition of control between, on the one hand, uh, the automated vehicle and the human operated vehicle. How should we do this? Uh, especially when we are moving now to level three, this is of course one of the, the biggest uh, discussion uh, discussions. I think we have to uh, see what we can do there, what is realistic, and also be very clear on what not can be done uh, to get uh, a good transition of control uh, in operation. That's one part of the um, um, of the discussion. Uh, another part on um, human factors is, of course, what 
what should we harmonize? What should we harmonize in the sense of um, uh, type of buttons that are used uh, in vehicles? What is what should be left alone to the to the OEMs and the suppliers? And where do we need harmonization of understanding for the driver that he, he understands in which kind of mode he is uh, when he is doing uh, when he's doing the drive in a in a level three type of vehicle? Um, so that's an important uh, element. Then we have the topic of um, training and driving licenses. Um, many people who drive a level two or level one, level two vehicle now don't get a full understanding of the vehicle before they buy it and before they start driving in it. So we are questioning ourselves what kind of changes should be made to training people to get more to, to how to change, let's say, the driving lessons and making people aware of the automation in their vehicle. Um, I think these are quite some um, important. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Jan, if I may uh, complete. Um, uh, there is one important topic on the investigation of the interaction with non-equipped road users. Um, uh, so uh, other participants uh, like pedestrians, cyclists, but also other users that are uh, driving in manual mode. Um, and you mentioned the, um, the what kind of equipment should be in the vehicle. I mean, that's also what kind of equipment should should be interacting with other participants or perhaps. Uh, some specific um, um, uh, devices that or lights or whatever that shows that a vehicle is indeed is uh, in automated mode and that you you should not expect uh, for example um, uh, eye contacts with the driver etc um, these are these are very interesting uh, research topics at the moment that can even lead to an eventual uh, a change of regulation um, uh, in terms of what should be fitted in the vehicles to interact with other vehicle, uh, other non-equipped road users. And then one <laughs> important topic on human factors, uh, I think you touched upon it, is the, to clarify what will be the role and the authority uh, of the um, of the um, uh, of uh, different actors, uh, the driver. The operator, the road operator, uh, and and so we. It is not clear if I eventually one uh, road operator will be able to somehow uh, interact with the automated vehicle in order to uh, harmonize. An example is harmonize the flow of of uh, vehicles on a on a highway, and um, and so there we are not talking about the direct the the, the very short. A term kind of automation, but it may be that uh, in, at one point uh, the road operator may uh, have an influence on the vehicle speed or the vehicle uh, flow um, on on its uh, highway, for example. And that will be very interesting to see uh, how we can cope with these kind of interactions. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both for the comments and the answers. Uh, we received another question. Uh, what, uh, there's also a comment about the reserve project which deals with cybersecurity. And if uh, we have any other questions, please pose them in the question panel. So, uh, perhaps you want to say some words about the preserve project. Um. I I, um, I cannot give the details, but maybe you can, Maxi. Yeah. Um, preserve was mainly targeting the uh, the standards around the CITS um, security. Uh, so the the eight to the eight to the eleven P. Uh, defined by SC, but also by uh, others, um, other 
um, bodies in, in the United States. So the security standards have been somehow implemented by Preserve and uh, also they put that on a chip as far as I understand so uh, to prove that uh, the, the feasibility of that standard. So the, the big issue actually in cybersecurity uh, that we face in the automation working group is not necessarily to, uh, to talk about the problem but see how this uh, actually how this is separated from the connectivity issue and, and what is really the biggest problem for automation. Um, so we try in, in all our discussions in the automation working group to, to, to uh, w whenever uh, this is more connectivity problem, uh, we, we, uh, we tend to distance ourselves from that discussion. And we, we hope that these discussions are taking place uh, in other groups. Uh, an example is the CITS platform working group five, uh, uh, led by DG Move, who's uh, meeting almost every month on uh, that specific uh, problem of the CITS uh, uh, cyber uh, uh, security issues. So now for automation, uh, you mentioned it, Bastian. Uh, the issues of, of over-the-air updates and these kind of things are a much bigger uh, threat than um, than uh, the actual uh, connectivity issue uh, related to CITS. Um, Thank you. Uh, we received a question about uh, the cities. When would they need to start planning their road infrastructure for automated vehicles? Who would like to answer? <laughs> well, I think um, now. Uh, now, because um, if you look at, let's say, the advances that are also being made also by the industry, on, for instance, um, the automated ballot parking. Um, this is a very interesting application that um, will have uh, direct input, let's say, in uh, in the um, build it infrastructure uh, in cities. I see already many cities, and uh, I can, can give an example of the Netherlands. The Netherlands, there are already cities, let's say, joining. Um, Forces and joining also, let's say, the discussion, uh, sharing the table on how should we prepare ourselves, because these pilots are of course coming up for the coming years. Um, these pilots will not be restricted to highways only. Um, of course, we are very much aware that automation in urban environments is quite different from uh, from, from the highway type applications, but still. Um, you always need to enter and to leave the city before getting in uh, to a highway and the other way around. So um, I think this is the right time to start thinking about it. That's I think for the for the the, the, the vehicle path. Um, when we look at the domain of uh, the people movers, um, I think that the the, the, the City Mobile 2 is doing a great job, and there are more and more uh, cities trying to uh, or getting a, a part of that activity. You also see that new cities um, are very much interested in um, in getting these type of systems in their city to really uh, have a function for public transport. So I see a lot of activity going on on different cities that are wanting this. So, um, I think it's good that people start thinking about it and cities are start also create uh, joining forces in how do we do this together and how do we avoid that every city again has to invent the wheel for the first time again. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Maybe Maxine, you want to add? But, uh, no, I, I would like to add just a small. Uh, there is Nico, but uh, I would like to add just a small uh, uh, comment on the fact that the uh, automation working group has not really worked on the 
uh, that much uh, on issues related to um, to uh, traffic management, uh, to road operator uh, centric issues on automation, as well as the uh, design uh, of uh, um, urban design and these kind of things. It's simply because the the, the people uh, did not fo uh, the people around the table did not mention this as a, an important topic. However, I think it is an important topic, and this may be uh, taken uh, up or either in the automation working group, but also in other groups, like uh, it, uh, perhaps the, autom the AirTrack automated driving uh, group, uh, as they have had um, more influence from um, road operators, uh, they, may, they may be, and, and also from cities, may uh, take these kind of um, topics uh, on the table. Uh, so the next question after cities will be on the member states. Uh, the question is, in addition to Finland, which other mer member states are working uh, on identifying all the topics and domains that should be addressed by authorities and administrations prior to wide penetration? automated driving. Can you repeat the question? I couldn't fully uh, hear it. Which other... Uh, um, in, addition to, yeah? in addition to Finland, mm -hmm. which member states have ongoing work in identifying topics and domains that should be addressed by authorities and administrations before a wide penetration of automated driving? Well, I think um, there are quite some member states now who are active in this uh, domain. It's, of course, the UK, which have quite some pilots where these questions, as you uh, stated them, uh, are also part of the discussion there. Uh, a lot is happening in, in France. We've seen that recently also in uh, Bordeaux, uh, in Germany, um, in Sweden, of course, in Finland, you already mentioned, Greece, Spain. Uh, so um, I think, and I, I may forget a few, uh, in Austria, I think there's a lot of uh, activity also going on on what do we need to do as a as a state in Europe, what what kind of um, questions should we ask ourselves? Should we develop our own legal framework, or should we, let's say, adapt it from those who are already have one? Um, how will it inf uh, affect our traffic system, our traffic flows? I think these discussions are now very much happening in, in uh, the. the the member states that I just uh, mentioned. Yes, um, I'd like to mention uh, that DRA is um, uh, has uh, the it has on the top on the topic of bringing together the member states on identifying what are their activities um, and uh, and what are the next step and what should be done together. Um, so you mentioned the UK, Netherlands, of course, uh, Sweden has a quite extensive uh, work program on that, uh, as published recently. Um, so Sweden has, um, no, sorry, Germany has a, um, just uh, published its, um, its, its, uh, its plan uh, for automation. Uh, France has uh, the Nouvelle France Industrielle program. Spain is, um, um, Spain is also uh, currently um, uh, putting together uh, some tests uh, to, um, uh, to test these uh, values on the uh, public roads. And this also uh, is very important to uh, look at uh, Japan and US. Uh, which are at the moment um, uh, very much ahead um, in I would say in terms of uh, plans but also in terms of uh, uh, connectivity. Uh, here in Europe we do not have that much strong 
uh, understanding of how the connectivity is going to be um, uh, established, let's say, to support automation, uh, whereas uh, on one side uh, the, the Japanese have uh, a more uh, vehicle to infrastructure, infrastructure that they want to uh, um, uh, deploy uh, actively and uh, and through the past deployment of, of of other similar systems we see that they have really the capabilities to deploy that very fast uh, in in us they uh, still have a willingness to uh, in terms of connectivity to deploy v2v kind of of, uh, of systems and they are much more ahead in terms of the policy making, I would say, uh, for to support eventually support automation, and that's written clearly in their roadmap. Thanks. Thank There's you. There's a joke for you. Thank you. Yep, there. Yep. Great. There was a question on full architecture. Um, it says, what control architecture do you recommend to get an optimal and correctly coordinated traffic control, including automated vehicles? So it's about, uh, I guess, decision and control algorithm and decision and control architecture. Um, do you have any comments, Sebastian? This question is actually uh, researched in, in, in two, uh, or I think in several uh, European projects uh, at this moment. Uh, one of them, which I'm also closely related to, is the iGame project, which is really about um, how should we create interaction protocols between the different uh, vehicles so that we understand um, the intention of different vehicles, because we really need that to make automation also a very effective uh, way of driving on our highways. Um, so this, this, uh, there are different approaches in the I project. It's the same holds for the Autonet 2030 uh, project, but also uh, in projects like Adaptive, of course, a very a very relevant project. Um, the uh, control strategies are uh, being researched. So um, I think we will learn a lot from these uh, projects, will, which will come up with their results uh, in, the, in the coming year. Thank you very much. Uh, I think our time is up, uh, but uh, we we thank you for your participation. Thank you for the presenters and uh, the speakers. We will make the presentations available along with the recording on the iMobility website. Uh, we will let every attendee know about it. Thank you once again, and uh, have a very nice day. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for joining.